Stan Van Gundy last night. Uh, shout out to Manny, uh, a former host of the Fan Zone. He sent this out in the chat. Um, Stan Van Gundy tweeted last night, and I quote, 90s NBA teams have just a trainer and a strength, strength coach. They practice more often and harder and played more back-to-backs. Teams now have a huge medical and, quote, performance staffs uh, and value rest over practice. Yet injuries and games uh, missed our way up. Something's not working. Now, gentlemen, I had the, um, the retweets. So I sent it to you guys. You guys were able to take a look at them. People who may not know what I'm talking about can go on Twitter themselves. I'm not going to spend too much time reading on them. But there were a bunch of retweets between, I believe, reporters and Stan's comments to the point where KD co-signed and says he agrees with them that something has to give about the multiple amount of injuries. In our own hit list streets, we had the conversation uh, with Greg, and he's saying, well, the game is a little bit more fast-paced. We had that conversation. I had that conversation with my younger brother. He said, that's not what it is. He says, physically, um, you know, the calls are different. He also said, um, he, he also was stating how um, the problem is technology. Back in the day, you, could do a full, uh, you couldn't do a full body scan and figure out injuries. Now you can do those things where players were playing hurt back in the day. You wouldn't know if they're hurt. Nowadays, you can figure that out a little bit easier. Um, Coach, let me start with you because you're the former professional player here and you kind of played, I guess, you kind of understand the mechanics of how players work and you work with strength and conditioning coaches yourself being on coaching staffs. Um, is what Stan Van Gundy saying, is there truth to it or would you agree uh, agree or disagree? I mean, uh, it's one of those where some, it can, two things can be right. You know, like I always say that both, both can be right. Like the game is, is, is different. It's played at a faster speed. It's played with more athleticism, the pace, the as many people flying through the air um you know just those things have changed the di- the dynamics of you know how basketball is played has changed since the 80s since the 70s since the 60s so to blame to say because you have more trainers and stuff like that that you shouldn't have these injuries i, I don't think that's totally accurate um but on a flip side i can say because we've seen the lebron james of the world and how he takes care of his body. That's why LeBron James can play these years. And uh, Patrick Ewan, body was broken down by like season 11 with the Knicks. Like, you know, one, one can can make that Larry Bird. That's your Celtics call, right? His back. Yeah, he played, imagine, he if Larry, yeah. imagine if Larry had taken off some days to rest his back on not back-to-backs and had the same treatment that a LeBron or a Carmelo. Let's not even go LeBron because LeBron is like the outlier. Let's go just like a Carmelo how many seasons he's played before this year not playing and been able to still play at a decent clip. Could that have been Larry Bird if he would have had the same treatment, the same sports medicine treatment, the same, you know, people um, back in. Even back Zeke, in I, I, even Isaiah Thomas, you know. He, he went Isaiah out with his Thomas. Achilles. Yeah, his, he went like, out with his Achilles. Achilles. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, so, so um, you know, when Steph says that, you know, something's not working, no, something is working. We're getting a lot of our star players, a lot of big-time players playing at a high rate for a longer period of time than some of our veterans did in the seventies and in the eighties. So, um, but I think to what he's really trying to say is we've got soft. So read between the lines. He, you know, yeah. he used all yeah. that just to say the league, yeah. the league is soft and we're soft and guys just taking off nights off. So, I mean, it depends, man. It really depends. So we're here talking about, for those of you joining us here on the Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans, we're discussing Stan Van Gundy's quote, talking about injuries comparing them to the 90s. He believes something is wrong. Paul, let me kick it to you now. What are your thoughts here with what Stan, do you agree or disagree with him? You know, I'm not going to say the league's off. I, I'll look at it with this one. Mac alluded to, obviously, LeBron says, we, we, see, we see the monetary investment into his best asset, right, which is him, his person, right? I even think about the Brandon Roy's of the world. If we think about his mm. early, the early part of his career, he comes out as a rookie, plays 60 games, mm-hmm. plays 74 games. I'd like to think if we had the technology then, because Brandon Roy's 38 now, right? If we had that technology 16, 17 years ago, Brandon Roy doesn't play 75 games on a potentially damaged knee, right? Which essentially was the start and end of his career what we thought would be a beautiful career. And we could find that path along hundreds of players in the NBA. Well, to add to it, his, his teammate, Greg Oden, is another one. Oh, I mean, Greg Oden, right? But we've seen a similar issue with the NFL, right? Um, so the NBA today, they practice less. 
Uh, they go full throttle less. NFL experienced the exact same thing starting in what, 2015, 2016, where Roger Goodell and the, and the Players Association agreed to have less contact in practices. It's hard to play a game at full speed, half speed. So, and as a hooper, I've never been a hooper, but I've been around basketball, as y'all know, right? I think about even someone like Mac. In the prime years of his basketball plan, which might be 12, 13, up until 30, Mac was probably playing basketball every day. Pick up a basketball, hooping every day, working on his game, working on his craft, physically playing basketball. And in NBA today, I think there are so many pockets where that's not happening. So when we get out to think about the limited action that we see in preseason, we don't know what happens now from a summer perspective in regards to how much these guys are putting in full go. We see some of these pockets and highlight clips on Instagram of guys working out together. But what, we're start, what I start to see is the same thing I've seen in the NFL. Less game in the offseason. When the season comes around, guys can't make it. The body's not making it. So I'm not going to say it's not because of technology or it is. I think it, part of it is they've changed the way they hoop. And I'll give you a perfect example, bro. The other day I picked up a basketball. I'm outside dribbling, you know, just playing around. My ankles are sore, bro, because I haven't hooped in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, is that Father Tom? Paul, is that Father Tom Father kicking Tom, in? Father Tom, bro. Throwing the football in the backyard. Arm is sore, right? Like so, Cam could beat you already. Concept. <laughs> nah, I and, I ain't gonna, and I'm not going to be that dad that let him win either. You're going to have to earn everything in his house. That's right. like, but but that I think part of that is is the challenge. So, you know, to Max's point, yes, two things can be true. Um, and, and I've seen Chatty, Mr. Twitter Fingers in there, responding to some of those people, Kevin Durant. He can't help himself. I've seen that thread. That's a challenge right now is, yes, we can't be mad that there's more technology because the technology ultimately is prof- is protecting the player guys ain't going out there risking injuries and I think or deeper injuries career ending injury life altering injuries to what their greatest asset is which is themselves so I support both sides of it it's just it's just tough as a fan because we want to see the best players 100% in the interest of fairness Paul that means and Mike let me toss you this question right if we're supporting the players for protecting their bodies we shouldn't be giving Kawhi that much flack because that's what he's trying no, to do. Right? Well, no, 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 that's a little bit different. No, no, I'm, no, just no, saying, no, I, I'm just no, saying. I'm just saying. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm just saying. I just asked the question. So, I asked the fair so, question. Did I not? So your question, your question just just walks into kind of where I think this conversation goes in so many different angles. And Mac and Paul just mentioned it. So there's the competition side, and then there's like the physical health side. Carl, you just talked, we've been talking so far about the physical side, but then there's a competition side. So the competition side is we still don't have any evidence that load management actually uh, um, facilitates a championship. We don't have any concrete evidence of that. Kawhi Leonard, they had a whole system in Toronto and for all intents and purposes, the Warriors are healthy. They get blown out. But anyways, we don't have any concrete evidence. But hold on, like, Mike, Mike, that, but that, that's my, to your point, what, I, and I'm sorry to cut you off. You know, I hate cutting you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if the load management is what prevented their wear and tear in the finals, maybe if the Warriors would have had better load management, their players would have gotten injured with the wear and tear. Well, I'm, 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 it's no concrete. Well, no, obviously. no, their better, their better load management would have just been not making it to the finals the three years before that. Like, yeah, but they yeah. kept, like, they kept it? making it to the final. That's that, that just comes from that it was bound to happen because they've been playing in the finals each year. So I think that's one conversation. But to the and I think what I think what Stan is trying to talk to and what he's trying to speak to is the competition level and how it's and and how the health is important. But when you talk about competition and you, and particularly, and Carl, that's why I like when you said the KD thing, because I think KD understood it. If we all remember, that was his complaint in the summer. He talked about the lack of practice. This is what he said. I, I There's a quote. He said, um, I went to them and he's talking about the organization as it relates to Steve Nash. He said, I went to them and was like, yo, I don't like how we're preparing. I don't like shoot arounds. I like practices. I need more. I want to work more on my fill in the blank. Hold me accountable. Get on my butt in film if that's going to help you get 
on everybody else's head. I want to do more closeouts. I want to work on more shell drills at practice. Now, we laughed about it. Uh, well, some people did. A lot of people was like, KD, really, it was practice? But Stan Van Gundy, and I think other people, and that's why he was in the comments, I think he's alluding to that, is that, and 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 another thing he said, and why, why it sparked something for me, is because I remember last year when he had the interview with Draymond, and Draymond talked to him, and he said, you hear the cliche, anything you do, do it at game speed. It's the most cliche statement in the world, except for when it comes to you. KD said, I am cliche. I'm simple. I'm efficient. I'm, I'm to the point, that's my game, and it's all I do. So I just approach every workout like a game and every game like a workout. So there is something to saying, and Paul was just alluding to it, there is something to saying, like, is muscle memory. You, these players, if they're, it's like that gift and a curse. Like you could play a lot to stay in shape, but you, the more you play, the more susceptible you are to injury. So that conversation of the healthy medium, I guess, is what we're having. But I'm leaning more towards what Stan is saying, if we're talking about from a practice standpoint, about the fact that they're not getting their reps in more so than, well, they have all of these uh and trainers and things like that, that's not a negative. We shouldn't take that away because like Max said, how good would Larry Bird have been if he had those? But I do think there's a balance between them getting their reps and them having the trainers. So I'm I'm not, I'm kind of in the middle on it, but I'm leaning more towards what Stan is saying is there's a deeper conversation we have to have about why all these players are getting hurt. Uh, Coach, you had one final point before I move on to, uh, to, to Jock. Um, no, 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 no. I was just saying that like, uh, when you when you look at the totality of it, like look, I, I just thought about it. Like when we said Isaiah Magic, and we said even Mike when he retired the first time, you know all those guys, thirty five and under. How old is Steph Curry right now? How old is LeBron James? He'd be thirty five right now. You get what I'm saying? So we're literally mm -hmm. saying Steph Curry. None of us on here is thinking Steph Curry. This is his last year at, at a solid elite level. We can see him playing like this for the next maybe four or five years. LeBron has done it for the last four or five years. Kobe did it until he got that last, you know, one or two injuries. He was he was a maniac playing and, and trying to play every single game with broken hands and broken feet yeah, and well, all that other Vince stuff. Vince Carter was playing in his into his early 40s, into his, his you know, so it's yeah. Yeah, so so guys were doing that and they were doing that because of the technology, because of the trainers, because of you know, the science because of taking care of the bodies, because of the investment on their bodies. So, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Well, well, the other thing, too, you have to understand, I think you go back and you look at how many games the guys were playing in the 90s. A lot of them were playing 82 games, seasons, back to back to back to back with no rest, mm -hmm. right? So I think that kind of does play into their wear and tear a little bit earlier. Ray Jarvis joining us. Ray Jarvis of the Wraparound Table and also the Gray Area. Ray, thanks for coming in on. We're discussing the injuries. I know you saw the Stan Van Gundy tweet and the KD retweets. What are your thoughts here on injuries in the NBA comparing them to the 90s players? Well, I, for the sake of not being repetitive, uh, Carl, can you just give me a general consensus of what the guy said so I don't repeat anything? Sure. Let, they, let me just pull up said. the tweet. So let me pull up the quote for you again. And for those who are just joining us, they could actually... Uh, see it as well. Um, so basically, Stan Van Gundy said, or uh, I think yesterday, he said, 90s NBA teams had had just a trainer and a strength coach. They practiced more often and harder and played more back-to-backs. Teams now have a huge, uh, have huge medical and, quote, performance staffs and value rest over practice, yet injuries and games missed our way up. Something's not working. Well, you know, I, I hear what Coach is saying, and and I always try to lean towards the people that play, the people who coach, which the people who are of that business. Like, I'm not going to walk into a kitchen and tell a chef to add more salt. Like, he's a, he's a five-star, what a Michelin star, whatever the case may be, he does this. So who am I to tell him what to do, right? So off that, with respect, I got to disagree with KD and coach. But it's not because I, I'm going to be foolish and jump out the window and say they don't know what they're talking about. They lived it, they experienced it. For me, I always go back to the NBA. Once Mike D'Antoni came into play and we got into seven, sec seven seconds or less and the pace of play started to pick up to where we are today. Mike, uh, uh, Coach, Paul, Carl, if we could go into a time in the machine right now, go get our younger selves from 90s Jordan era, 
Sack and Kobe era and, and plop them right now and let, let our younger selves watch the game, it would look like the game is in fast forward. So what I'm getting at with that is that this game is being played so fast. It's so many possessions. It's, it's, I forgot to are... mention to you that we said that. So I blame Carl for you saying you disagree because that's exactly <laughs> what I said first. Okay. And <laughs> Carl didn't tell you that I said that. So I blame. I know. I was. No, I, he asked for the quote. I'm blaming Carl. I'm blaming you. Hold on. Let's let's get paying attention. Hold on. Let's stop you for a minute because let me just get as Jarvis. But as Jarvis, hold on. I gotta say this. But as Ray always does. Because he's a poet, he's definitely saying it better than I did. So I want you Yo, to listen. continue, right? And Hold keep on, cooking. Ray. Ray, he has I, a different style. I'm gonna let him cook. Oh, Paul, we don't oh want to hear right now. Oh, okay. Fine. And I'll Ray, you can tell I'll me about myself. Home. Ray, when you asked him, you said, "Can you tell me what the fella said so I don't?" I meant y'all, but I wasn't gonna step on the hole. He wasn't clear. I thought he meant the wall. He wasn't clear. He didn't ask me what Stan Van Gundy said. He said, "What did we say?" Come on, media man. Go ahead, man. Yo, Ray, you a good team player. That's why I love you. You my man. What are you doing, media man? It's okay. What are you doing? It's okay. Ray, you can check me and say, Carl, that's not what I asked you. That was not what I'm sorry. He was being so gracious. Yeah, I know he was. I would have never said anything. As you were, but cook, but cook, but cook. Let me continue. Let me continue. Nothing gets by you guys. Nothing gets by you. Nah, nah, Mac, Mac. This is why we here, Mac. We got to hold Carl accountable. He is the media. We supposed to do it right. Come on, I'm listening to Carl. I'm like, yo, bro, are you bugging? But why did y'all check me then? Why do you wait till after I finished this to say something? Why don't you stop me and say, raise your hand? It's the words of Ray in the middle of the argument. Excuse me, teacher. You're wrong. Why don't you just raise it? Why don't you just say, Carl, you were wrong to begin with? I would be like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm pivoting. That's what you had to do. You can't breathe, man. You got veins popping out your head right now. You breathe, yo. You got the vein coming out right here. Hey. Well, basically, what I was saying was the game was being played at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. Guys are stopping and starting like they're hitting the brakes even harder. They're cutting even faster. Look, look at the spacing, right? Look how far out offices are functioning and running actions. Again, when we were kids, you were seeing a pick and roll 20 feet out, foul line down out. A high low action in, in our day was foul line into the low post, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when I hear Stan Van say that, it's like, I hear you, bro. But in the 90s, we weren't even running the ball up into our half-court sets. Guys were walking that ball up, right? There was, a, there was somebody in the corner taking a possession off. It might be a simple dump down into your big. Remember, it was a big man's league. So what were the guards doing? A lot of times, waiting for a kick out. The game, a lot of, in a lot of ways, was safer on your lower extremities. You think about the amount of lower body in injuries that these players have because they're running more, they're cutting more. It's a mm -hmm. guards league. And with a guards league agility, being shifty, you're always one. Think about Kyrie back in the first Warriors matchup. My man hurt his knee. The knee went out on the behind the back. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, unheard of when we were kids. So it's like always running back to the 90s and in and, and, and 2023, you know, maybe in 2013 or 2003. We could keep running back and using the 90s and the 80s as a litmus test for what basketball is. But geez, as we are becoming old, and it's 2023, this is what the game is. We can't keep holding up the 90s as a standard. When in all actuality, the second half of the 90s was an eyesore for basketball. Games were in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. College scores. Terrible. Right? We got to stop doing that because at a certain point, it's, it stops sounding like criticism. And it sounds like hate. Now, there's a lot of hate. It's definitely that's a lot of hate. Like hate. It's a lot that's of what hate. It's a lot You're trying of to hate. say the league is soft on the low. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of hate. Playing that game speed and practicing that game speed, et cetera. Yes, yes, it does help. But the human body is not designed to do what NBA wing players do night in and night out for 36 minutes a night. Running as fast as possible, starting and stopping. Imagine what Steph does coming Preach, off all right. of those screens yeah. and pin downs, Preach. all of those drags. Like that hurts. I saw a picture with a meme just on Facebook not too long ago with Rachel Nichols and James Harden talking to each other. James Harden's feet were swollen after the game. You know what I mean? We got to look at all of these variables. The guys are practicing less because the game is harder. A sport where you have to play both sides. You can't get a designated Stop. hitter. 
You got to defend that fast. When you're asking the best wing defender to stand in front of John Morant, fight through mm. scenes, the way Talk. he decides to come on the screen, spin back and come back the other way. You got to chase that man. Talk nice. Let's go. Come on. So you Talk mean if, if you Talk can dish nice. it, if you can dish it, you got to be able to take it being dished back to you in this game is what you're saying. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Wow. 